The original Star Wars Battlefront came out 20 years ago in 2004, with its sequel releasing just one year later in 2005. There are many occasions where we play games from our past through those rose-tinted nostalgia glasses, but even then they don't really live up to the hype that we had for them at the time. So how do they run on the Nintendo Switch? What have Aspire done? What technical improvements have been made? And exactly how has the online been managed in terms of dedicated or peer-to-peer -peer servers? Oh, and uh, handheld. And does it have gyro? Questions we have. Find out. Let's. It starts out on the boo, and slightly amusingly, first trying to wipe the Gungan off the face of the planet. Glenn quipped this may well have been because, let's be honest, Jar Jar Binks was a little bit annoying. <gasps> and starting out by shooting him in the face may have been a loose reference to that. The narrative of Battlefront 1 was a little more linear than its sequel. Generally, the first game plonks you into an environment after a short cutscene that's stripped from the films, while the sequel has set up an entire storyline centered around the 501st Brigade. When we arrived at the bombed out ruins of Maegiro, our Jedi commander believed we had been sent to take out a droid. Voice acted by one of the clone troopers, and with the missions themselves also following a more linear structure as we'll see, at least in terms of objective delivery. Now gameplay wise, we'll start off with Battlefront 1. You can play single player, multiplayer, or split screen. All of them allow you to play through the campaign missions, but I will talk specifically about online multiplayer in a minute. Now each of the units has their own characteristics, from fast firing rifles to snipers and engineers carrying medkits. There are also vehicles which can be entered and used to ferry around your own units or push the advance. Now if you've ever played a battlefield game, it's a little like conquest mode. There are several points around the map and they show the color of which factions holding them. The simple task here is to take over the other faction's points, which then allows you to spawn from them, gradually pushing them back, but with an overarching goal of reducing their total troops to zero, which can be seen up here. I really had hoped that Aspire would introduce gyroscopic control. For me, it's perfect in first person or third person shooters when the game's running so smoothly. Unfortunately, that's not here. What we do have though is quite a heavy handed auto lock mechanic, which can be toggled on and off, but it allows you to plow enemies down while strafing left and right and moving onwards towards the next capture points. If you do perish, you'll have to wait briefly whilst looking at who killed you before you can respawn. It's not just vehicles that you can get into, it's also mounted gun emplacements and you'll need to use the environments for cover. And particularly in Battlefront 1, the biggest issue for me is the artificial intelligence or lack thereof. Unlike when you play online, the computer can be a little headless chicken, charging into the fray without a thought about which objective you should go for next. But even still, it's really a fun time. I guess it's more like the early Musu titles, Dynasty Warriors, where it's up to the player to do the vast majority of the strategic thinking, but also application. You can only capture a point when on foot, so using that vehicle to push the advance, take the enemies out, and then work with a partner really was enjoyable. In fact, that's the takeaway from Battlefront 1. I'd always seen it as the lesser of the two games, but it still holds up really well. Now, where it will excel is when we go online. Unfortunately, as we have an early copy, no one was online, it was just us. But I can give you a very important piece of information, and that's that Aspire have dedicated servers. Now, at the moment, I can only see two per game, but these are 64 player dedicated servers, at least for Battlefront 2, which is very promising. I did hop into one of those just to see if it actually was up and running, and it is ready. I always used to play these in third person because it was easier to use cover to your advantage. On Switch, that's handled quite nicely. You can press one button to switch between first and third, and click the other stick in to aim down the sights of your weapon. Now, strangely, I did find that with Battlefront 2, switching between first and third wasn't as simple. I had to go into the menu and do it manually there, whereas I'm sure it was supposed to be down on the D-pad back in the day. I must be missing it, but either way, it was a bit annoying. Now, both games are launched from the same application, and then you move between the two and can back out to that launcher menu. But moving on to the sequel then, as mentioned, there's a much tighter emphasis on story, but also the gameplay saw a number of distinct changes. Rather than have you running around in a large area, capturing points with an aim of just whittling the enemy down to zero, Stages had a series of different objectives. You might have to kill a number of alien creatures before you can then move on to the next one, where you'll be destroying shield generators and taking on the role of some of the force users. Oh, 
In both titles, you'll have a main and secondary weapon. You can switch between them. There are locations on the map where you can heal up or replenish ammunition from a droid, and there's more progression in the sequel. There's actually a currency, and you can use that to unlock new units, but also to buy perks for one of the game modes, and even level up individual troop types. Battlefront 2 also pushed things further in space combat, allowing you to pilot a number of space vehicles through many iconic battles. You can perform aerial evasion moves, lock onto enemies, but What's really nice is if you don't enjoy those sections, you can actually skip them entirely. Now, while the Rise of the Empire campaign in Battlefront 2 follows that 501st Brigade, the Galactic Conquest mode allowed for a more slow-paced strategic gameplay, where you took it in turns to take moves, inevitably coming into contact with the enemy and then engaging in conflicts. It's from here that you can also use those upgrades, and it's nice and an entirely different feeling mode. Both games also have an instant action option, so you can just jump into one of the battles, choose a side, and go at it. Now mechanically, the sequel feels much better. It's difficult to articulate, but things like the way you lock on, the movement of your character itself, from jumping, entering, and controlling vehicles, even down to things like clicking the left stick into sprint, whereas the first didn't have that, in those regards, it just feels a bit more modern. There is a ton of content between the two games. The deciding factor for me, though, will be how the online functions when you've got 64 players on there. Every indicator says that it's going to run well, and that is where the lifeblood of the Battlefront series is for me. Whether or not two servers is going to be enough, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe Aspire are hedging their bets with the Nintendo Online, not being the most hardcore community, especially for this genre. Gameplay across both titles is excellent. Having split screen on one Switch is nice, especially when it maintains that frame rate, and there is a lot of content here. It's enjoyable and fast paced, a couple of tweaks to controls would have been nice, and I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the first and third person camera on Battlefront 2. Still, across the two, gameplay scores 18 out of 20, while controls score 16 out of 20. I'll keep this as succinct as I can. It's running at 60 frames per second in both docked and handheld mode, and I haven't noticed any stutters or drops. Load times are reasonable. Aspire have done a decent job at making everything work in widescreen, although some of the scopes still hold their 4x3 aspect ratio, which looks a little unusual, but for the most part, everything looks as it should. It does look like Aspire have done some work on textures, Certainly, you could get the game looking like this back in the day, but it presents a very crisp and clean image, and even with the baked-in lighting and some of the shadows, it looks great running at native resolution. Running at 60fps, sure the geometry is showing its age, but I think it's fair to say that both of these sit nicely on the Nintendo Switch, and visually, Aspire have done a good job. Star Wars, with its iconic soundtrack, as well as soundscape, carries across nicely. Everything sounds high quality. Audio samples, as well as musical pieces, feel of a high quality. Directional sound is also particularly good, allowing you to locate enemies approaching from behind or the side. While the visuals certainly show their age, this seems to be a nice and careful remaster of the two games that perform very well on the Switch. Visuals and performance score 19 out of 20. Sound and audio also scores 19 out of 20. The Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection will set you back £31.49, should have been £29.99 because it sounds better, and it was a download of something ridiculous like 33 gigs. It took bloody ages. It has offline one or two player split screen, online one to 64 player with dedicated servers. It includes Star Wars Battlefront Classic, the bonus, the bonus map Jabba's Palace, Star Wars Battlefront 2, with bonus maps Bespin, Cloud City, Renvar Harbor, Renvar Citadel, and Yavin 4 Arena, as well as a couple of bonus heroes, and a load of other gubbins I can't be bothered to list off. All of that's to say, that's really quite good value, I'd say. I wasn't sure how these were going to hold up, but actually, they're easily now in the top five shooters, especially online shooters that we've got on Switch. There's tons of content here and it's well presented. Could they have gone a little lower in price? Maybe, but we've seen other releases, remasters and remakes that don't give quite as much content charge even more than this. I think it's very reasonable, but and you know what we're going to say, where's the physical? I don't know. You let me know. Value scores 17 out of 20. Of 
For me personally, my tastes and my expectations, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection has exceeded them in most ways. Please put Gyro in, come on now. I think fans and non will actually have a lot of fun here and thank you Aspire for putting dedicated servers in. Do keep an eye on those because yeah, you want to make sure people have actually got space. It gets a switch up score of 89%. Thank you to our Patreons and members, all of you that enjoy the content, let me know. Is this one you're going to be picking up? Are you going to join us online? And are you pleased with the work Aspire have done? As always, if you want to buy anything, we have links to most things, physical, digital, all of that gubbins, and you can save a bit of money. All the links are in the description as well as the Joy-Cons you saw in this video.